you are welcome to yet another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. There is no single case against R. Kelly that is completely free of loopholes, including state charges that were eventually dropped without trial as was the case in Chicago and Minnesota. In each of the cases, the government seemed to play an unfair game, either faking storylines or falsifying evidence among other approaches, and sadly to mention the courts were supportive of this malicious strategy. In New York for example, the government started off with its usual game straight from the indictment presenting charges that were never meant to appear on R. Kelly's charge sheet. The government prosecutors then realized that if they played fair with R. Kelly, they were not going to have any real crimes to use against him. They therefore needed to cook up disturbing charges which even though they didn't apply to his case, with support and cooperation from the Justice Department would guarantee a long prison sentence. What better false charges to introduce to the indictment than those that are historically known to have been used against the black celebrities successfully, such as the Mann Act of 1910 which was welcomed with open arms by the racist Americans who quickly used the same to destroy heavyweight champion Jack Johnson's boxing career, all for simply falling in love with white women. Apart from the introduction of alien charges to R. Kelly's indictment, Another major strategy the government used against him was the prejudicial introduction of numerous witnesses beyond the acceptable number who presented uncorroborated information that was not in any way related to the case, but with hearsay storylines that lacked supporting evidence. If anyone watched the surviving R. Kelly documentary and saw the way every Tom, Dick and Harry was brought on set to humiliate R. Kelly by telling all kinds of stories which they couldn't prove, this is the very same way the Brooklyn District Court conducted the New York trial say to him, I don't even know if I want an apology. I wouldn't even feel it was real. I just think he's numb to people's feelings and um, he knows about my story. He's been dismissive about it. He still didn't address what he did to me. So I hope he gets You help. feel this and you get the help needed because this can't keep going on. You can't keep doing this to it. Like a bad man's world. I never really recovered from it. I'm really angry with you for what you're doing. The courtroom looked like just another episode of the infamous Lifetime TV show which saw all kinds of women, including those who were way above the age of 30 when they met R. Kelly, all supposedly seeking compensation for the rhyme they spent with the R&B king. They all appeared to think that by simply loving R. Kelly or rather claiming to love him for a part of their lifetime, he owed them a retirement package like he was their guarantee of social security. Bringing all such accusers into the courtroom to testify against R. Kelly turned what was supposed to be an organized event into a marketplace of a trial, a move that highly prejudiced the R&B king causing the jurors to wrongfully convict him. Meanwhile none of the stories told against Mr. Kelly could be backed up with evidence, and this coupled with the accusers lack of credibility could mean that everything said was a lie simply meant to tarnish R. Kelly's image. In fact someone once commented that R. Kelly's New York trial was like a narration of a traffic accident with no video footage or proper police investigation to arrive at the facts of what truly happened. Even if an eyewitness stated that the driver suddenly braked, there is no way to prove that this could have been the cause of the crash. R. Kelly's trial featured multiple witnesses, all simply stating their own hearsay, and with no way to prove if the allegations they made were actually true. And this is why it's still unclear why they were all believed even after it was found that some of them had been perpetual liars not afraid to tell false stories even under oath. It was also found that some of these women had been intentionally deployed by their parents to seduce R. Kelly and trap him into a blackmail cycle where they could extort him, advising their mischievous daughters to lie to him that they were 18. We therefore fail to understand exactly why the courts chose to believe these numerous witness uncorroborated testimonies and not R. Kelly. According to Jackie, I was meant to understand that inference or preponderance of evidence is not allowed when navigating a criminal case. However in R. Kelly's situation, I hear a lot of this was applied. While R. Kelly was dealing with a criminal case, the government and the Department of Justice treated it like a civil matter. Criminal cases require a lot of accuracy when analyzing evidence or testimonies presented. 
Presumptions relating to elements of a charged offense create a constitutional error if deployed against criminal defendants in conclusive terms. Presumption may only be acceptable if conveyed by way of inference instructions that invite the jury to consider evidence on one or more points. However, in R. Kelly's case, the presumptions made by the judges were simply by preponderance done by a single judge without the jury's involvement which made them one-man rulings. And this is how R. Kelly was robed of his victory. According to HN member Lisa McRae, If the courts don't have respect for miscarriages of justice when it is obvious and on TV recordings, then they've turned the courts into halls of extortion and racketeering chambers. They use the courts to pretend they're conducting legal processes when actually they are just as corrupt as Michael Avenatti. They know that there is nothing we can do about it but gripe and complain. They even took his commissary illegally. No wonder accuser Lanita Carter is trying to sue again. Either they kept her money too, or they did give her half of it and she now sees that this is just a money grab. They use court to carry out a wicked agenda of taking everything someone has worked for their whole life just by hiding behind generic terms like sexual abuse, domestic violence, and obstruction of justice. We will never get ahead of this game. R. Kelly's whole catalog and life and freedom has simply been snatched away due to a greedy group of people called the justice system along with EBOP, Sony and government. And sadly this is happening all over America. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say. To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.